Again, welcome to DSRT 734 class, Inferential Statistics in Decision Making. This lecture has covered the concept of fitting a linear time trend. Now, when we mention a linear time trend, we are talking about time series data. A time series data is a data that the independent variable is based on a, a period of time or is a time in general. So let's say, for example, in a stock price, a stock price normally changes, ch changes with respect to time. So we can say a, a stock price data of a company will be a time series data. So here we start with the concept of a linear time trend. Now, how can you describe a time series data that possesses a trend? Now, for a time series data set, a linear time trend is useful model. So a linear time trend is nothing but a line that is used to model the changes in some phenomena measure over time. So in a linear time trend model, the independent variable is always a time index. So that's the concept again of a time series data. Time series data means the independent variable is a time index. Now, the following data is taken from a result of the 2013 to 2014 National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey of U.S. adults age 20 and over who are above their recommended weight based on body mass index or BMI. Now, a body mass index expressed as weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared. So to find the body mass index is equal to a weight in kilogram divided by height squared or in meters squared. So it's commonly used to classify people as overweight. So BMI from 25.0 example to 29.9 is obese, obese greater than or equal to 30 and extremely obese is equal to 40 or greater than 40. Now, based on BMI, the percent of overweight Americans from 1999 to 2014 is shown in the following table. So here, since our data set here is based on the time, we can see that the time changes the percent overweight. So this is again a time series data. Now, if we are going to plot this data in a, a scatter plot, the time will be our independent variable. Then because time will determine the overweight, the percentage of overweight in US population over 20 years old. So based on this data set, we can see that there's an increasing trend. When the years are going, up the percentage of overweight of Americans also is going up. So we again use Microsoft Excel or any start application and we come up with the best fit line. So here we say the graph of the data reveal an upward trend. As the years goes increases again the percentage of overweight Americans goes up. Now, to describe the data, we will model the trend by fitting a line through the data with the notion of capturing how fast or average the series is changing over time. Now, estimating the slope of the line will provide the average rate of change per year in the percent of overweight Americans. Now, the line is fitted using the least square estimate in exactly the same way as the other regression models we study in our previous lectures. Now, the independent variable in a linear trend model is always time. So that's also called the time series data. So in this case, the dependent variable will be the percent of overweight Americans. So the least square equation, and this is the estimator. So in this case, again, our independent variable will be time in years. So our y-intercept is negative 705.5214 plus our slope is 0 0.3851 and the year. 
So that would be the computer output. Again, in our previous lectures, we went through the steps of generating the regression equation and also the best fit line using Microsoft Excel. So this is the computer output. Based on the output here, we can say that yes, there's a very strong relationship between, again, the years and the percent of overweight Americans because the R value is 0.98, almost once, perfect increasing. Then R squared tells us that almost 97% of the independent variable explains the dependent variable. So the time have a very strong relationship with the uh, dependent variable. And again, the computer system generate the ANOVA. ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. And we are going to cover this again in the future in inferential statistics. Our main goal in this section is knowing what is the R and R square because our main goal is finding the relationship between those two variables, the time and also the percent of overweight Americans. So the solution here, we say we est the estimate of the slope of the line, which is 0.3851, will tell us that on average, the percent of overweight Americans is increasing at the rate of 0.3851% per year. Again, the same concept in college algebra, the steepness, which is the slope of a line based on the steepness. If the steepness is very high, the slope value will be very high. Now, given how well the line fit the data, our R square was 96.6 from the computer output that was generated. And we can see R square is 96.6% or 0.966. So this tells us that it's, this is a very good trend line because almost 97% of the independent variable explain the dependent variable. In this case, the time really explain the percent of Americans uh, obese. And the trend line can also be used for short-term prediction. So suppose we should estimate the percent of overweight in Americans in 2015. Again, we plug in the 2015 is our independent. We already generated a regression equation. So if we plug it in the equation, we can find the percent in time. And that's what is here. This is our y-intercept. The slope is 0 0.3851, so we plug the 215. So this tells us by 2015, 70.5% of Americans will be overweight. So that will be the conclusion of this class. And again, before we finish this lecture, I'm going to use the Excel one more time. So let's assume again, we have our data set here. Let's say our A, we are assuming A is our time and B is our percent, the percentage of Americans who are obese. Again, just make up the data. So I'm going to select the data and I'm going to go to insert and I'll look for the scatter plot. Uh, this is scatter plot, insert a scatter plot and I will insert it. Now we can see there's an increase in, in this data set. Now I need the best fit line. So I'm going to right click any of the dots. Again, right click on the dot. Otherwise you are not going to see the trend line. So here we have hard trend line. So I'll click on hard trend line. And this is our best fit line or the trend line. We can see that again, the value from zero to 80, that's the B and greater than the A, which is our time. We start from zero to 14. The highest we go is 12. Now the linear is already selected. We are creating a linear model. Now I can go down and click on other set the intercept if I want to see the intercept. Or oh, my case, in this case, I'm going to display the whole equation on the chart. Also, if I like, I can display the R square, which is what we talk about. 
So based on this data set, let's increase the size. So based on this data set, we can see that our slope is 3.08. X is our years, and then Y intercept is 34.77. So if this X is our years, then we can say that, and it's been, uh, the interval is yearly, then we can say that every year, 3.06 increase rate for the obese. The main thing is R square here. Based on this data, we can say that 78% of the independent variable explain the dependent variable or determine. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures and wish everybody the best. Thank you for your time.